Hi, I'm Dr. Jason Bressler, and thank you for visiting the Alex's Lemonade Stand Foundation website. I'm here to guide you on how to properly care for your child's teeth and gums during their fight against cancer. In this video, we'll talk about how to practice good oral hygiene habits while your child is undergoing treatment, including proper techniques on brushing and flossing, as well as the difference between good and bad treats. I'll also explain how to navigate dental treatments while undergoing cancer therapy. As a board certified pediatric dentist in Philadelphia, I know how easily dental health can be pushed to the side, especially during hectic times in your life. At Doc Brussler's Cavity Busters, we understand the upset and stress when learning about your child's diagnosis. We hope this video series helps alleviate some of that stress by improving your child's dental and overall health. One good thing about dental disease is that most of it's 100% preventable. As long as you practice healthy habits, dental disease is unlikely to contribute any additional stress to you and your child during their care. To prevent dental disease, your child should brush their teeth twice a day with a fluoride toothpaste for two minutes. The most important time to brush is right before bed. And after brushing, your child should not eat or drink anything except water. The second most important time to brush is in the morning, but instead of brushing right when they wake up, it's better to brush after they've eaten breakfast. This keeps their mouth cleaner longer, which significantly reduces the risk of decay. If your child isn't old enough, or you feel like they're just not brushing well enough, we recommend that you help them, even if they resist. Your child should also floss daily. The best time to floss is before brushing at bedtime. This part can be tricky. Sometimes flossing can be awkward or difficult. So I have a few different products here that might make flossing easier. Now we're gonna demonstrate how to floss with the help of my friend Buster here. Flossing is extremely important, but it's also the most overlooked aspect of oral hygiene. Why is it the most overlooked? Usually for two reasons. One, most people don't know the proper techniques on how to floss, and two, when they floss, it's uncomfortable. It's usually uncomfortable because they're not using the proper techniques. So I'll show you now what's the best way to help floss your child's teeth so one, it's not uncomfortable, and two, you're not getting your fingers bit. So the first way is to use traditional floss. So traditional floss is just the long string that you pull and wrap around your fingers and go in between each tooth. But you wanna make sure that you're using them properly. When you're using traditional floss, the proper technique to use it is you wrap it around your middle finger. Then you wrap it around your other middle finger. And what that does is it frees up both your index fingers and your thumbs to be able to grab the floss. That way you can manipulate it in any direction you want keeping it taut so that when you go through the contacts, you can do it without any discomfort and you can move the floss in any direction to make sure any plaque, food, or debris can be easily removed from in between those contacts. So when you go to floss, basically you're gonna go in between the contacts, coming at a 45 degree angle, and then pressing towards the back, sliding up and down, and towards the front and sliding up and down. Do that before you take the floss out from in between the teeth that makes sure that any plaque or debris is no longer in between those surfaces. Because you could brush 100 times a day, but unless you floss, you're only cleaning two-thirds of the tooth surface. So that's why flossing is so important. So traditional floss sometimes is hard to do on children because our adult-sized hands don't necessarily fit in their child-sized mouth, and you don't want to get bit. That's not fun. So they make other products like flossers or floss holders, a lot of these you can find in your local drugstore. Basically, it's a little piece of floss on a little stick. And what you want to do is, when you're flossing, don't come straight down, come at a 45 degree angle and rock it through the contact. Once you're through, push towards the back, slide up and down, pull towards the front, slide up and down, and then rock it back out at a 45 degree angle. That prevents any snapping of the floss, which for kids is the most common reason why they get upset and don't want to continue flossing after that. And make sure you go through every single tooth that's touching so that we know that there's no food, no plaque, no debris in between the teeth. And that, combined with good brushing, makes sure that when we go to bed, our mouth's 100% clean. You might also want to consider a fluoride mouthwash because they reduce the risk of decay. Keep in mind that following your dentist's recommendation is always important and that your child should do their best to spit out the mouthwash 
instead of swallowing it. If your child's in pain from treatment, you can ask your dentist to prescribe a pain relieving mouthwash. Your child's diet is just as important as their oral hygiene habits. Care should be taken to create a nutritional program that limits their risk for dental decay while ensuring they have enough nutrients to keep their energy levels up to continue their fight against cancer in the best way possible. Most of all, it is important to limit sugary snacks and beverages. If given, they should be at mealtime. Frequent snacking or drinking sugary beverages like juice or soda exponentially increases the risk of dental decay. During this difficult time, you might give your child food as a reward for getting through treatments, and that's okay. Treats that wash away quickly and don't stick to their teeth are much better options, like chocolates or ice cream. Sticky candies that stay on their teeth for a long time have a much higher risk of causing tooth decay and should be avoided. Remember, if it's sticky and sweet, it's a yucky treat. Again, prevention is the most important step against dental disease, and good hygiene can counteract the occasional feel-good food. Doing anything you can to make this stage of your child's battle more bearable is always desirable, but if it causes dental decay or gum disease, it will increase their risk for pain and infection. Dental treatment during this stage of chemotherapy can be complicated and will require communication between your oncologist and pediatric dentist. The oral cavity, being highly susceptible to the effects of chemo and radiation, is the most frequently documented source of sepsis in the immunosuppressed patient. Children undergoing various cancer treatments sometimes experience dental pain, sore or bleeding gums, oral ulcers, changes in taste, oral fungal or viral infections, dry mouth, and other symptoms depending on their specific medications or therapies. Your oncologist and dentist will work together to manage any of these issues. Timing of treatment will be one of the more critical components of dental care. Your child may be immunocompromised during treatment. Timing dental treatment when your child's immune system is at its strongest will help prevent infection. Sometimes more definitive treatment options are necessary to reduce the risk of abscess or infection or the random failed filling or crown. And this may include extraction of a tooth that you would normally try to save if your child wasn't immunocompromised. Remember, your pediatric dentist will be an integral part of your child's medical care and proper communication is extremely important to prevent any unwanted or unforeseen outcomes during treatment. Keeping your dentist up to date about all treatments and most recent labs will be very important. I recommend keeping a folder or a binder with all of this information to help keep you organized. Remember, you should never feel afraid to ask your dentist questions. This is a fight and you're not alone. The more you know, the better you can ensure your child receives the proper care. Thank you for watching and for visiting the Alex's Lemonade Stand Foundation website.